I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. One year ago, I planted about 30 California native plants, including ground cover, in this space with the intention of it growing together into a maintenance-free California native mini meadow in my parkway. Let's see how it worked out. Along with the first batch of plants, I brought home several cubic feet of leaf mulch and added three inches over the whole 100 square foot bed. Grow Native Nursery in Westwood is my one stop for California native plants. It's a nonprofit retail nursery that helps support the conservation, education, horticulture, and research efforts of Rancho Santa Ana Botanic Garden. The great thing about a meadow is you plant it and forget it. From July through September, things were peaceful. Drama arrived in October. Monarch butterflies laid eggs on milkweed covered in aphids. Lady beetles came to the rescue and laid eggs, which hatched into voracious larvae, which cleaned up the showy milkweed, enough for two monarch caterpillars to complete their fifth instar. December arrived and the hookera bloomed in time for holidays. The monarch began its transformation and stinkhorn fungi popped up. I planted some edible miner's lettuce just before the first butterfly emerged and the pitcher sage bloomed. Providing food for monarchs is an ongoing occupation in the late bloomer garden. In March, I discovered more caterpillars the fireworks began in April. I had scattered a native wildflower seed mix in November and the poppies started popping. I see my old nemesis, the non-native aphids, already on this and it's just sprouted from the ground so I have to nip this in the bud. The meadow started to fill in in April. My vigilance was paying off with the showy milkweed. I got a little help from an earwig. Then a colorful May. Late May, I decided it was time for an update. It's all grown together <laughs> and uh, along with a few weeds and some garlic that I popped in. The poppies have come and gone, but today we're going to clean it up and see what we've got. Phyla spreads by surface runners. It requires less water than a lawn and blooms spring and summer. I mean, is there any benefit to, to sumac? Yeah. Is it California native? California native, but the problem is the fire explodes. Yeah. Ooh. It's hard to see where one thing starts and one thing stops. It all grew together, which was the plan. The princess flower leaves add to the thick mulch, which keeps the soil from drying out, thereby saving water. Some of the plants propagate by rhizome, so it's just a matter of time before there's a whole network of roots under the surface. I purposely selected plants that would bloom at different times, so there's always something beautiful to look at. <laughs> and if nothing's blooming down there, this is usually blooming on top. The centerpiece for this flower island is my princess flower, which is a native of South America, and once established, requires little water <laughs> or maintenance. Native plants use less water, which is especially attractive in drought-challenged California. Are you growing native plants? If you can't grow edibles, 
grow natives, or a combination of the two. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you'll share with friends. I'm Kay. I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Good grief. They're hanging on with super glue. Ugh.